Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Andrews. I'm the director of the Coastal Policy Center at William & Mary Law School. Thank you all for coming. I want to say first, I'm sorry about the parking situation. We didn't realize that we were here with much of the rest of the world at the same time. Um, and in fact, um, our president of William & Mary will be joining us momentarily. He too is negotiating the parking labyrinth. So we're going to go ahead and start because I wanted to tell you the really important information, if you haven't heard, that coffee is across the hall and water and juice. And the restrooms are around the corner in, in the next hall. So uh, those are the key facts out of the way. Um, we're very pleased to have this conference today and that we had such a good turnout. It's a beautiful day in Williamsburg, and we're glad that you could join us. Um, this is our fourth annual conference. Um, I'd like to introduce first uh, Drew Lumpkin, who's the regional director for US Senator Mark Warner, who's going to read a letter of welcome from the senator. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Again, my name is Drew Lumpkin. I'm the regional director for Senator Mark Warner. Um, he's uh, sorry he couldn't be here. He regrets that he could not attend, but he's in DC. Um, Senate is in their lame duck session. Um, but he sends a letter that he want, wanted me to read. It begins, Dear Friends, I am pleased to extend my warmest greetings to all who are gathered for the Virginia Coastal Policy Center's 2016th annual conference, Living with the Water, Too Much and Too Little. This event provides an important opportunity to discuss the challenges facing working waterfront communities in the 21st century. Since Virginia's founding, waterfront, com waterfront communities have played an integral role in shaping and driving the Commonwealth's economy. Today's threats, such as rising sea levels and beach erosion, provide unique challenges to, the, to our waterfront communities, and it'll take a unified and innovative effort to meet these challenges and forge long-term solutions that ensure the continued success of these communities. I commend all those here who are working to address these critical issues in order to keep our economy strong and our waterfronts prosperous. On this important occasion, I am very pleased to join with your families, friends, and community in wishing the Virginia Coastal Policy Center the very best for a successful and informative conference. Sincerely, Mark R. Warner, United States Senator. That's terrific. We appreciate that. Thank you. So um, next, I'm going to introduce the dean of our law school, Davison Douglas, to welcome you all. Well, good morning. good morning. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for navigating uh, the, the, the parking lot uh, outside. But uh, it's, it is wonderful to be here. And this is a real honor for us to host this gathering again. This is the fourth time uh, that we've, we've held this conference. Uh, it's, and, and what I love about it is it's an opportunity for so many people who care about these issues to come together not just folks who are here in Virginia, but other parts of the country as well. I was speaking with a number of you ahead of the conference the, this morning. One of you is here from Southern California. This, these are issues that are relevant, uh, not just to our area, but across the country. So thank you for being here. I think this is gonna be a wonderful opportunity for us to dive in to some of the challenges that we face, particularly in this region. So I wish you a wonderful day, and again, the law school is very proud to be part of this, as is the College of William and Mary and our School of Marine Science, and, and I, I too wish you a wonderful gathering here today. Thank you. I think I'm gonna lower this a little bit. Um, so as our dean just said, um, this is our fourth conference. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Virginia Coastal Policy Center. We are a clinical program at the law school, but we're a policy program. We're not a litigation program, so that's unusual among law clinics. And we are a partnership between the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, the law school, and Virginia Sea Grant. We like to call ourselves the intersection between science, law, and policy. And I think the agenda today really demonstrates that, looking at everything from the sea level rise and development pressures challenges faced by our working waterfronts to a very technical subject, a very exciting proposed groundwater injection project for our de depleting aquifer. So um, at the end of the day, we're going to go to the Muscarelli Museum of Art from, at William & Mary right down the street. We'll have shuttle buses right in front to take you there and bring you back. And um, we're going to have a reception appropriately enough to taste 
the oysters that are the fruits of the labors of all the people trying to save our oysters. And we'll hear from Colonel Jason Kelly, who's the commander of the Corps of Engineers Norfolk District, talking about the federal efforts to address sea level rise and restore the oyster in the bay. So it's a great day, lots of topics. Uh, that's why we have this wonderful broad brush name of living with the water. Sometimes it's too much and sometimes it's too little in all these different places. So um, the first thing that we have on the agenda this morning where, um, oh, and I do want to mention too, we have a tweeting competition for those of you who tweet. How tweet it is. And, sorry, and um, we're going to have a drawing for a bottle of wine at the end of the day for the best tweet. So be clever, tweet early, tweet often, um, and you could get a lovely bottle of Williamsburg Winery wine. Um, all right, onward. Um, I will introduce to you President Taylor Reevely once he actually gets a parking spot, the poor man. And uh, so we'll go ahead with our working waterfronts portion of the agenda. And I'm honored to introduce to you today Bill Pruitt. I don't know that he needs an introduction because everybody knows Bill Pruitt. Uh, he was born and raised on Tangier Island, so he knows all about working waterfront issues. He worked on the water with his father and his grandfather during his summers and his school vacations. He has 41 years of experience in the public sector and 10 years of experience in the private sector, which I don't understand because you're only like 50, right, Bill? Um, Bill is a decorated Vietnam veteran who was the longest serving commissioner of the Virginia Marine Resources Commission, having served under seven governors. And I think that alone is a testament to Bill and his character. Currently, Bill serves as a member of the Virginia Institute of Marine Science Foundation Board and he helps citizens who may be having problems dealing with the government at all levels. As you can tell, he's the right man for this job. And he's going to be giving us an overview of Virginia's first working waterfront master plan. And I do want to mention to you, we do have a few copies of the plan, which is, it's thick, uh, over on the table just for people to review, but not to take with you, please, because it will be available next week um, on DEQ's Coastal Zone Management website, and we'll make it available on ours as well. Um, but we do have a summary of the recommendations of the plan that was a handout that all of you should have received. So, with no more ado, Bill Pruitt. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, when I drove in here, I saw all those people, and I figured, they were here to hear me. <laughs> and then I, then I looked around and I saw John Daniel and Preston Bryant and I said, oh, that's why they're here. Uh, I'd like to uh, say that uh, I don't know anything about the plan. Neil Barber and Louis Lawrence have all the answers. So when you get out to, uh, and during the break, you can talk to those guys. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. But first, uh, Governor Linwood Holton gave me some advice when I retired. He said, Bill, don't put in a second phone line. He said, because I suggested to my wife to do that when I left the mansion. And uh, she said, are you sure, Governor, you want to do this? And he says, yes, First Lady, I need another line. People's going to be calling me, asking me for all kinds of advice and speaking engagements and all this. And he said, I just got to have another phone line. That was before cell phones. And he said, Bill, I didn't need it, and I don't think you will. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right. Uh, the, this issue of user conflicts that the panels will be discussing today is nothing new. In the, in the seafood industry, there's always been conflicts. The seafood industry is up and down and has been for since our first president fished for shad in the Tomac River. It goes from one fishery to the other. You have good years and you have bad years. What's different here is we have a new, a new industry, so to speak. And that is the aquaculture and, and farming of oysters and clams. So while we've had conflicts of the bottom use going all the way back to the Baylor survey, this, this new conflict of the water column is just that. It's something new. 
We've had, over the years, uh, at VMRC, every meeting, every month, there's been a disagreement on, a, on a, any given case, whether to build a marina, expand a marina, build a dock, or expand the dock. That's, that's an ongoing thing, and it's in the code, very ex in explicit terms, of how that is managed. And I think VMRC is doing a wonderful job managing that. This, however, this water column issue, there's a lot of waterfront property. People come down and build a big home on the water, and they see floats as they are, and they don't understand it. But the thing I want to mention to you is, and I feel strongly about, is you know, whatever we do in this plan, or whoever, however it goes forward, whether it goes to regulation, whether recommendations come out of it to be uh, for, for the General Assembly, let's not forget the industry that's already there. There's a grandfather clause in everything. And I think we, we need to remember the industry that's there and protect that. Every county in the state has an economic development program. We're pulling, trying to pull in business, which is great. But I've always said, let's take care of the business that's here first. I'm a little bit off my course here, Elizabeth, but I just had to get that out. Uh, now, let me tell you my small role in this, so far in this planning process. Uh, Louis Lawrence, the executive director of the Planning Commission, asked me to do some field work, talk to people, citizens, board of supervisors, members, and so forth. And I have done just that. And I want to say to you, uh, most of it was done in casual conversations. Just uh, have a cup of coffee and chat. I did, we did attend, along with the planners in the uh, appropriate areas, we attended two board of supervisors official meetings. West Mullen County and Richmond County. I was extremely impressed, not just with those two counties, but every county in this catchment area of their knowledge and concern about the dwindling of working waterfronts and what they needed to do. And in Lancaster County, for example, they already have in their uh, master plan this issue addressed. So. And when I talk to individual board members from the Eastern Shore to the Northern Neck, not one time did I hear anything negative. But they all suggest, and, 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 and there's a, they all realize that their jurisdiction is upland. The state's jurisdiction is from the, in the water column and, and from low water mark, from the high water mark and the low water mark. So, they understand very much so that they need to come together. And this is the type of thing that's gonna take a lot of meetings around a lot of tables. And, and we're gonna to have to be able to give and take a little bit. But the good news is that every one of these elected officials that I talk to are concerned about the issue and are willing to do something about it. And, and same with the, with the General Assembly. We'll hear from several General Assembly members later, and I think you're going to hear that same message from them. They're, they're looking to solve problems, not to create problems. So, uh, and citizens I talked to, my main job there was to make them aware of the, the, the problem of dwindling working waterfronts. It's not just here. It's, uh, it's all over the, the Gulf. The, in the uh, Pacific Coast, it's a situation that's, uh, well, I'm, from, when, from when I was a boy, there were numerous places where you could land your catch. Now, there's just a few places, in, in the, in, uh, for example, in the Middle Peninsula. So, Elizabeth, you're on the right track here. It's going to take, take a lot of work. and. Uh, <coughs> As part of my missionary work, I'll be around to help you as much as I can, but uh, you've got the great staff to do it, and, uh, and I think industry's here today. You've got, de you've got developers here. You've got people that own waterfront property. 
So it's a matter of coming around the table and working things out, which Virginians have always done. Thank you. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'll take the microphone to you. I'd also like to point out that our President Taylor Reevely has arrived. He found a parking spot. So um, does anyone have any questions for Bill before he sits down? Okay. Thank you. My name is Jack White. I'm a supervisor in Matthews County. I've also been an oyster farmer for close to 25 years. Um, thank you for what you're doing, Mr. Pruitt. My big question is, is that we're defining working waterfronts, and they're defined as water-dependent activities. And this is a bigger broader question that I present to the group this morning so that we think about this. Presently under current law, a water dependent activity does not include a restaurant. I have live working waterfront and wharfs and I can't put a restaurant there because it's not a water dependent activity. Whereas my friends, the gravy sucking pigs in Washington and elsewhere can put or have erected 20 high rise towers and are developing right up to the waterfront. This is a justice issue. This is a development for rural. And if we're going to talk work and waterfronts, we really need to address that issue and come up with a different definition. Thank you. Uh, Louie, uh, put that in your notes. I agree with you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, well, I can't see because of the light in the back of the room through the windows. I can't see if President Reevely has stepped out or not. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce a team of our Coastal Policy Center students that we're very proud to present. Oh. I'm getting it. Someone's pointing, but I can't see where they're pointing to. Ah, thank you. Um, th thank you. <laughs> I can't see to the back of the room. So, he tried to hide, but, I, you know, I wouldn't let him. So, um, and the stairs are on that end of the stage. But we're so glad that you could make it and that you could join us and find a parking spot. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I um, actually was here on time. <laughs> and then I said, I, I expected an effortless parking situation. <laughs> I've ended up parking. I had to fight off the golf police because <laughs> apparently I have parked now where the, uh, the golfers, if any come today, wish to park. But I promised I wouldn't be here all day. It's really great to see such a large assembly. As we all know, whatever you call it, the sea does seem to be rising and the earth does seem to be subsiding in our part of the world. And while it's going to take a good while for Williamsburg to be swept, that's not true the closer we get to the coast. To deal with this issue is going to take, as we all know, an enormous amount of cooperation by all sorts of people including people in uh, the universities. And it's going to take a really interdisciplinary effort because it poses problems, challenges that go far, far beyond simply the physical and the economic and run all the way to really significant psychological issues as people confront the reality of maybe having to lose their homes or move them as historic areas are affected. And it appears that many of the effects will be felt disproportionately by lower socioeconomic groups. So that's a veritable mayor's nest, challenging nest of issues. 
that we all got to engage together. And that starts by recognizing the reality that confronts us and then trying to get on with it. But it's really encouraging to see uh, so many people here that there aren't enough seats Though there are some seats scattered around, and if you're standing, you just have to ferret them out. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President Reevely. Very true words. And I do have to add, as a professor, I'm used to people not wanting to sit in the front row. But there are some seats, so please do come on up. Um, so after those very good words of wisdom from Taylor Reevely, we're going to move on to a presentation from some of our Coastal Policy Center students. And it's exactly what he was talking about, that we have to address these issues. And they're particularly tough in the working waterfront arena, I think, because they are all between valid, legitimate, legal uses of our waterfront. So getting together and, and talking around the table as Bill Pruitt recommended is really the solution, it seems.